Uh, join me on a glorious Mothering Sunday, Holy Mother's Day there, Happy Mother's Day. And uh, the sun is, well, it's like a summer's day now. Just looking at the temperature in the greenhouse, it's just coming up to 42 degrees, and it's quite warm in here. What I've got in the box, I've had a little delivery come Friday, or oh, is it yesterday? Isn't it? These are the only onion sets I'm growing, and uh, these are a variety called Red Ray. I've never grown them before. This was actually from Marshalls, but I think Sutton's and the other companies do them. So I'll be taking these out here and inspecting them. I've looked on the internet, say, because I haven't grown these before, and I come across a very interesting video, and it was by Mick Bolte, and he also grows these. And what he does, he grows them in little uh, coffee cups and puts them in uh, little section trays. I'll just show you. Mick actually starts his off in these tea coffee cups, then puts them in these 15 cell trays, and they're ideal, as he said, for transporting round. I've got some plastic cups here, but they're a bit too slim and wobble around a bit. So what I've done, I've actually chopped the bottom off. So I'll be starting mine off in ring culture. <laughs> Although the bottoms of the plants will, should touch the bottom, when I do come to plant them out into the soil, I'll be just lifting that up will keep most of the roots intact and shouldn't cause too much disturbance. So the next job I'll be doing for the next, I don't know, half an hour is chopping the bottoms off these cups. As with all sets, onions or whatever, the first thing you should do when you get them is open the bag, get them out and inspect them. Anything with any sign of mould, a bit squidgy or loose skins, bin them. Don't even compost them, throw them in the bin and get them off your site. That's the sorting done out now and all in all I've got a total of 65 which passed the mark and there's 12 there which failed. So and not a bad ratio that isn't and uh, so they're a decent size and that's a 250 gram bag and the variety as I said before is Red Ray. The potting mixture that I'll be using to put the uh, Red Rays up is this uh, this here is the clover compost this this is the very last i had from last season's batch and these are the vermiculite i'll be mixing that with that's the new vermiculite bag which poundland are now selling it's not the old one with the charlie dimmick sponsored one that's the one for poundland for this year but this is the the uh, clover stuff and as you can see that's been lying in the bag here and it's just absolutely brilliant stuff so it'll be interesting to see when I do open the other bag here that does compare to this. And so this vermiculite does look finer than the stuff we had last year and I thought that was pretty good. There is one more final ingredient to add to this mix for the onions, both the potting on the seedlings and also for the onion sets. And that's this stuff here called Charge. I have got a big tub of this I bought from, I think it was Amazon or something. And what this is, it's, uh, they refer to it as beetle frass. It's, it's beetle poo really in it. And what it does, it's, it stimulates the root growth and uh, improves that so quite a lot of the the big onion growers put it in their mix as well so this is a uh, stuff called charge and that there's a bit more mix ready to go so that's three trays of 15 each 45 in total let's get sewing That's all the 45 planted up now. All that's left is to give them a water in. We'll do this twice at least because the cups are deep, so I'll give it the water chance to get down to the bottom. 
The main thing for this will do is to get rid of any air pockets in the soil. Once all of these have been done, these will be left in the cold greenhouse. I might put a bit of newspaper over the top the first few nights if we've still got a bit of frost around. But apart from that, they're on their own. The seed sowing continues and today we're going to have a brassica fest for seed sowing. I'll be using a, an 84 cell tray to look after all these seedlings in one go. It's easier for transportation in and out of the propagator. And as usual, the mixture I'm filling in Levington's F2 plus S with the sprinkling of vermiculite. The seeds in rows of 12 and uh, I've already partitioned off and labelled each variety there. And to prevent the deliberate mistake we had with the onion sowing, the seeds are all in sowing order there and as each one gets sown I'll be removing the packet elsewhere. <laughs> I'll just go over the top making a little depression with my friend the Sharpie and then we're ready to start sowing. The first thing I'm going to be sowing is the Brussels sprout, this variety is Trafalgar and it's by the seed company from Marshalls. Although I'd like to think that most seed companies adapt the same attitude, Marshalls actually advertise on the back of the packet the guarantee 100% replacement if you're not happy with it so if you have a poor germination or whatever let them know because if they don't get no feedback they think they're doing good so we just gently guide one seed into each hole you know, they cover it up with the same mixture or if you like use a bit of vermiculite All of the seeds are definitely sown now and I've already started filling the holes in. I've decided to use vermiculite on this occasion, no particular reason. And uh, I find that the seed sowing card is, helps a great deal just for filling the holes in. It's quite directive, so uh, well worth a shot if you want to try it. So that's it, all done and dusted. I'll just whizz her along to the bottom and go along the rows just to tell you what we've got in. On the very end there is cauliflower, that's all year round. Next up, cauliflower clapton, followed by cabbage golden acre. Then we have uh, another cabbage greyhound, the calabrese iron man, I had this fantastic crop off that last year. And last but not least, on the end, a couple of rows of Brussels sprout and the varieties Trafalgar. All that's left now is to give these a good sprinkling with a fine rose. And I'll pop these into the one of the big heated propagators in the greenhouse in the garden. I've just popped them into the heated propagator now. And hopefully they should start germinating quite soon. It is warm in here. And as soon as I do see any sign of germination, I'll be taking them out. Because brassicas don't like it too hot. With all the potato buckets planted up now, I'm just having to shuffle around in the greenhouse trying to create a bit of space, put something in order. And while I was ferreting around the bottom there, I found a bag and I looked and it was uh, some garlic and I think I bought it in about August, September from the Shrewsbury Flower Show. I got it from the Isle of Wight garlic farm and uh, I completely forgot about it. Normally I put that out the back end of the previous year, but say today it hasn't gone out yet. What I will do, I think I'm going to start it off in modules because I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to do the onions and the garlic yet. So that will give them a kick start and when I do get the beds ready, they'll be ready to go out. There's two varieties. There's, uh, I've got one uh, bulb called Red Check. I've just split that up and probably got about eight cloves out of it. And the other one, I've got four bulbs and this variety is called cork c-a-u-l-k cork white and there's four four bulbs that so i need to split those up in cloud i've already split one up and with the door shut there the smell of garlic is 
Fantastic. I've just opened the first bag of compost that I've purchased this year in the clover. And on first impressions, I don't look too bad. Hopefully, all the other bags will be the same as well. The mixture that I'll be using is the clover compost. I've mixed that with a little bit of uh, vermiculite. And also, I shall be adding a drop of this. This is the charge, the beetle poo. I'll just put a, a cap full of that in. And mix that up, then we're ready to go. Right, that's the compost in the trays. The first variety I'll be planting is the ones called Red Check. Now I'm just on the on my phone onto the Isle of White garlic farm. And reading what it said there, it's a heritage variety and it's a hard neck. And the this exotic hard neck comes from Moravia in the Czech Republic. Glazed purple skins with plump cloves. Our trials show that this garlic has intermediate rust resistance and, and grows with vigour. It delivers a strong flavour than most UK garlic. This garlic produces a beautiful double alfio serpent's head. Snap it off to increase bulb size and serve it in a stir fry. Well, that's food for thought for a bit later on, hopefully in the season if it takes off. So we'll just pop these few into here and then we'll get the others underway. The second variety of garlic that I'm sowing is one called cork white. Again, this is a hard neck variety and reading the info on the Isle of White website, it says it's uh, selected from the best purple striped garlic found in Russia and Eastern Europe. Large clove, deeply peeling, vigorous hard neck, they grow particularly well in our relative soft UK climate, north or south, but can withstand temperatures down to minus 20 centigrade. That's all settled in now. All I need to do is give them a little drink. I probably won't touch these again for another couple of weeks or something. So with the cold weather coming, I don't want the soil too damp and rot the bulbs. But uh, I think they'll seem okay. I've just got another couple of tubs to pot up then we're done just a little update that's all the garlic in now there's the uh, the cork white I managed to get 18 in it fits nicely into a little mushroom box and moving across on this side we've got the check red the six in there and I had a three spare and I've put those into three inch pots so they'll uh, sit in the greenhouse and uh, hopefully grow away I'll just pan out now this little fleece tent I've got in there I've got my uh, first uh, second earlies and main crop potatoes underneath and also my red ray onions there underneath and all keeping warm when we've got the beast allegedly arriving this weekend and just coming out a bit further the buckets there there's eight buckets those are the uh, swift first early potatoes as you can see we're uh, stacking up here now we're getting short of room just a little update on the clover compost um, it wasn't as good as I thought it was. Initially when I opened the bag, as you saw, it looked fairly good. But as I've delved down deeper, I've pulled bits of rubbish and whatever is out in there. It isn't as quite as bad as I thought it would be and what I'd seen on other people's bags, but it isn't as good as what we had last year. So something to bear in mind for the future, I think. Well, the plan for me now was originally going to be carrying on with the strawberry bed, ripping all that out, uh, fertilising it and then putting the new plants in. But we've had quite a few showers over the, during the day and the, the ground is quite wet so uh, I won't be doing that. But what I can be doing is carrying on with potting the uh, onions on. I will be filming it although I will be showing you on there because it'll be it'll be dragging on like a I don't know an epic. So uh, that's all for this one. See you in the next one. All the best and bye for now.